Winterberg in Germany's Hochsauerland, the venue for the seventh race weekend of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup. In what is a winter wonderland in the colloquially known Dutch Alps, first action on Friday from Skeleton and the men taking to the ice first. After the first run was cancelled because of non-compliance with sweeping protocols after a protest by the German team, we had a one-heat race. Axel Jung, fourth off from the top of the track, had been 11th fastest in the first run that never counted. But a good run from the German on his second attempt at the track produced a flyer. Junk had the lead as we got to Martins Ducours. In the first round, he had been tied for second place with his brother Thomas, 26 hundredths off the lead. But you don't give Martins Ducours a second opportunity and get away with it. Having lost the chance to win in Segulda last week, he was determined to make this one count and took the lead by a hundredth. Duka still led as we got to Alexander Gassner of Germany. He'd been eighth at the top of a massively tight midfield pack where 1300s covered 11 sliders. He couldn't quite match the performance of the leaders, but he came across the line third fastest. Next up, Thomas Dukors, the Latvian fresh off his second World Cup win at his home track a week earlier. 18 years after his first, and a great first run, but the second didn't match what he'd been able to produce the first time. He dropped behind Gassner, fourth place. The winner of three of the last four races on this track had been Alexander Chechikov. He was also the fastest man in the first heat. He had most to lose and lose it he did. The start was there, but the drive was not. He would come across the line third fastest, meaning it was a 60th World Cup victory for Martin Stukors of Latvia, ahead of Axel Junk by a hundredth, with Treshikov taking the bronze. And it's Dukors who leads the World Cup rankings with one race remaining. More snow in the air on Friday afternoon. It was time for women's skeleton. Into the second heat of the race, Elena Nikitina, 2400 in front of then leader Valentina Margaglio of Italy, the Italian coming up from 10th spot. Nikitina, fifth tied after the first heat, had been sixth in December, took the lead with the fastest start in the competition and a good run. Next up, Mimi Reneva. Well, she had been in third place in December's race, fourth after the first seat, just 500 out of the medals, but she struggled to hold off the resurgent Russian, dropping a tenth of a second back into the final corner and not quite catching her at the line. In the medals for the second time in a week, Yulia Kanakina. Fresh off silver, her career best result in Segulda just a week earlier. She was looking for another medal and almost had it. Just ahead into the final corner, but she came up 200 shy. Jacqueline Lurling was fourth on her home track in December, her only qualifying standard result for the German Olympic team to that stage. She needed a big one, came from a long way back to take the lead with one to go. And that one was the winner here in December, Kimberly Boss. She had a half second advantage after the first heat, but were their nerves creeping in? Slower at the start, gradually the speed ebbed away, but she had enough to take victory by a quarter second. Her second win, her second in Winterberg, with her family watching on from the sidelines. Jacqueline Lurling, the silver medalist, Elaine and Nikita, and the bronze. Kimberly Boss leads the World Cup with one race left to go. Saturday's action in Winterberg began as ever with women's monopole. Canada Cynthia Apiolet in fifth place after the first of two heats, tied with teammate Melissa Lotholz to the hundredth of a second. 
And only 300s behind former driver for Canada, Kaylee Humphreys. Fantastic battle of the North American athletes. Appiah held a slender advantage over Lotholtz, with Humphreys still to come. Now sliding in US colours and a fully fledged US citizen, Kelly Humphreys, the reigning world champion in women's monobob, looking for another podium finish here. Strong start, but still nursing a hamstring injury from pre-Christmas. Humphreys dropped back early on and was unable to wrestle the lead back until the line. Three sleds remains, and in the top three, Lara Nolte from Germany. She's had a slew of medals already this season, none yet gold, but the hometown queen from the Winterberg Bob Club was in fine form, heading to her second straight podium on home ice. Australia's Brianna Walker is one of the benchmarks in the Monobob World Series. A multiple race winner last year. She's already had victory in the Roper Cup race here in Winterberg this year. And after another strong run, headed to yet another medal as she took the lead with one to go. Alana Myers-Taylor was the winner last time out here in Winterberg, one of her previous three gold medals of the Monobob series. This is a track Alana knows well and loves to race. Despite not having the greatest speed, she still had more than enough in hand to claim her fourth win of the season and to move to the top of the Monobob World Series rankings. Brianna Walker and Lara Nolte completing the podium behind the winner. A rare two-man excursion in Winterberg, only the second time in four seasons they've raced on this track. Rostislav Gajtukovic on another strong weekend after claiming his first ever two-man win in race one in Segulda a week earlier. Back on German soil in Winterberg, he was battling to hold off Brad Hall, who'd been just behind him in the first heat, took the lead with four sleds remaining. Was there another podium beckoning for the Russian? In the final four sleds were three Germans. Christoph Harfer, a bronze medalist earlier in the season with Matthias Sommer behind him, slipped back behind Gajtukovic at the start and never fully recovered. Didn't have enough speed at the bottom to hold off the flying Russian. In the top three for the first time in two man on this track, Justin Cripps with Cam Stones both celebrated their birthday in the week between Sigulda and Winterberg. And they gave themselves a late birthday present as Cripps guaranteed himself his first ever two man medal in Winterberg. The Canadian had laid more than a quarter of a second off the battle for top honors. However, that was going to be fought out between two Germans. Hansi Lochner broke the six-year-old track record with his first heat to lead Cripps by 26 hundreds and built on that in the second. Another good drive, putting the pressure on the race leader. Lochner was guaranteed at least a silver medal, but would he take gold? The only man to beat Francesco Friedrich last season, could he do it again? Well, Friedrich made an even better start and tidied up the bottom of the track that had caused him problems to race away, tying his track record from the first heat and guaranteeing himself his 100th World Cup medal, his 42nd in two-man and his fifth win here in Winterberg. He continues to lead the point standings from Guy Tukovic and Cripps. Heavy overnight snow delayed the start of Sunday's programme and there is still snow in the air to make the women's race a little bit of a crazy one. Alana Myers-Taylor, a former world champion on this track, only 11th after the first heat. She went early in the worst of the snow conditions, but in her second run laid down an absolute scorcher nearly two seconds faster. Alana still led as we got to the top half dozen sleds. Christina Brun and Kristen Buchnowski of Canada, they are in contention for the World Cup Crystal Globe, led by Alana Myers-Taylor at the moment. 2300s back early on. 
Her first heat advantage of nearly three tenths of a second had evaporated as she dropped to second. Next up, Kim Kilicki of Germany. Silver medalist in an all-German sweep in December's race in Winterberg. She was in fifth position, half a second away from the lead. Had the advantage over Myers Taylor early on and just managed to hang on to it. Martina Fontenelle of Switzerland fell by the wayside as we got to the top three. Kaylee Humphreys and Sylvia Hoffman. Humphreys last on the podium here six seasons ago, but give the American half a sniff of an opportunity and she will take it. She couldn't quite hang on to Kalicki, but was second with just two sleds remaining. China's Wai Ming Ming, second after the first heat, couldn't hang on as the snow returned. And so it was Kalicki that led as we got to the final sled. Hometown queen Lauren Alter with Deborah Levy, her favoured brake woman. Cautious at the start, Nolta nursed her advantage to the line, only hanging on by 13 hundreds, but enough to claim her third straight gold medal here in Winterberg, her home track. Kalicki second, Humphreys completing the podium. Fourth place is enough to keep Alana Myers-Taylor atop the points table, but in Samaritz, it is anybody's crystal globe to win. Sunday afternoon and clearer conditions for the blue ribbon event, the Koenigsklasse, the four-man bobsleigh. Hunter Church from the United States lying a great tied fifth place after the first of the two heats, battling with Russian Maxim Anjanov. They had been inseparable in the first run, but Church put together a great start and a great drive to put himself in the lead with four to go. In fourth place, just over a quarter second off the lead, Brad Hall of Great Britain. The crew searching for yet another top result. A fantastic fast start and a smooth second drive put him ahead of Hunter Church. Not by much, but by enough. They led with three to go. Just seven hundreds faster than the Britons had been the tie for the silver medal. Germany's Hansi Lochner and Canada's Justin Cripps. Lochner went first to try and break the tie, but it was evident early on he was not going to have the pace to stay in front. The gap opened up and he dropped not to second, but to third place behind Brad Hall and Hunter Church. Hall was in the medals. Justin Cripps has been getting stronger all season long. The Canadian has had medals on this track before and was hoping to hold the silver medal, but a mistake right at the start cost them pace. And further down the track, getting very sideways meant he too would drop completely out of the medals. Hall and Church were now in the top two. Surely lightning couldn't strike three times. The leader by two tenths and 27 hundredths over Brad Hall was Francesco Fritic. And the great German made no mistakes. Undefeated in 2021, he remains undefeated in 2022 as well. Continues his four-man winning streak with another career gold. His 13th straight four-man gold medal, including two world championships, Friedrich continues to lead the chase for the Crystal Globe with the final race remaining and seems the odds-on favourite for Olympic four-man triumph as well. Another big weekend of racing and vital points earned for Olympic qualifications. One more race weekend remains. Samaritz in Switzerland and the European Championships await.